Hello everyone, I'm Bogda. In today's tutorial, we're going to walk you through the key features of Instant and how we get you started right away. So let's get right into it. Now, the first thing that we notice when we log into Instant is the dashboard. Before we start fully explaining the dashboard, I just want to show you the tutorial section, which we will be referring to a few times in this video. We can get to it either by clicking the tutorials tab or by scrolling down in our dashboard. Here, you can see my lovely colleagues and myself's deep dives into certain features within Instadoodle. In the dashboard, you will see your current projects, specifically the last five altered projects on your account. We can also look through the pages below and even search through the existing projects by name. We can change the view to a list view should you prefer it. On each project, you'll notice a small arrow on the top right corner. Clicking it will reveal a drop-down menu that lets us edit, export, rename, duplicate, and even delete our project. Please be aware that we are unable to restore deleted projects, so I recommend always double-checking the project you are about to delete. Now we also have this big plus button. This is how we add a new project to our dashboard. Clicking it will reveal the Create New Project pop-up. We currently have two options, Manual Mode or AI Wizard. We have an in-depth tutorial on AI Wizard in the tutorial section. I highly encourage you to watch it. In this case, we'll go with the manual mode. Once we hit next, we will also be greeted by templates. We also have an in-depth tutorial regarding this, so please check it out in the tutorials tab. In this case, we'll go with a blank project, so I'll choose the empty project option and hit next. In the next screen, we're presented with all the tools available for us to create our video. Before we go through this, Please note that in case your canvas is too big or too small, as it can be on certain devices, please use control and the scroll on your mouse to adjust to your preference. Now, let's go through the tools. We'll start with the Doodles tab, which has three subcategories. The Character tab will show us the characters present within InstaDoodle. You can search for any specific one in the search bar or look for it by using the filter. We can add a doodle from the ones shown to us below by either clicking it directly or clicking and dragging it into the canvas. The props subcategory is similar, but instead of characters, we have all the props that we can use to add to our video. We can also search for specific props or filter them using the filter button. Before we talk about the custom subcategory, I just want to mention the two buttons below, namely upload image and generate with AI. Upload image will open the upload image pop-up, which will let you upload any PNG or JPEG from your device to your library by dragging and dropping or navigating through the, to the file manually. And we also have the generate with AI button. In the generate with AI pop-up, we can find several past doodles that we've created. We can also choose if we want a background or an element or even the style in which we want to be generated. This also includes the color options, which we will have a in-depth tutorial regarding the color splash and its features very soon. We also have a tutorial on how to generate doodles using our AI. Images added through these two options are stored in the custom tab. Here we can see all of the images that we've uploaded to our account or added them to our library via the generate with AI button. We can also search for any specific ones or filter them by projects we've done in the past. Let's move on to the text tab. Here, we'll find a list of all the fonts built into InstaDoodle and all the ones that have been uploaded by us. It's important to note that if you are using a specific alphabet, such as Russian or Chinese, to select the font that supports this alphabet. We can also upload our own font by using the Upload Font button. You can find an in-depth tutorial about this in our Tutorials tab. And now for the Layers tab, which we also have a separate tutorial for, but before we move on, I just want to mention a few important details about this tab. Most importantly, that it not only affects the layering of your elements, but also the order in which the elements are drawn. The last element in this list will be drawn first, while the topmost element will be drawn last. Note that you can drag and drop these elements in whatever order you like. Now that we are done with the left side menu, let's see the editor timeline that we have in the bottom. This timeline shows all the slides that we have in our project we can select which one we want to view and edit. Selecting the three dots will also give us the option to duplicate or delete the slide. The big plus button will enable us to add a new slide, either a blank one or one from our ready-made templates. I'm going to add a few slides to our project. 
Now let's have a closer look at the canvas in the middle. The elements we've added throughout the video are a bit bunched up. We can move them by clicking and dragging the mouse. We can also resize them with the squares in each corner. And the square in the top can be used to rotate the element. You'll also notice that we have a few buttons that appear at the bottom of the element after we select them. The first one on the left is the Doodle Editor button. We have an in-depth tutorial on how to use this feature in a separate video, which I highly recommend checking out. The next one is the Duplicate button, followed by the Delete button. Clicking the three dots will give us a few more options, like bringing it forward or backward, which will change the layering or order of the element. We can also flip the element vertically or horizontally. We can also duplicate the element on all slides or copy it to paste on a different slide within the project. Note that these options may differ depending on the type of element that you have selected. Now let's have a look at the buttons located below the canvas. We have the all important undo button accompanied by his faithful sidekick, the redo button. We also have the option of turning snap align on and off. Having this option on will offer assistance when trying to, for example, get a doodle exactly in the center of your side. While having this option off gives us more freedom to move the element as we wish. The play button will play a preview of your project so far, starting with the slide that you currently have selected. While the arrows left and right will switch to the previous or next slide. Further to the right, we'll see the option to zoom the canvas in and out or reset the default view. We can now move on to the right hand menu. Here, we'll notice the properties tab. If we have no element selected, then we will only see the slide category, which we can expand. Here we can modify the slide transition, which we have an in-depth tutorial for in our tutorials tab. We can also double, triple, or so on, the overall drawing speed of the slide, as indicated by the slide duration. We can also automatically sync our slide with the voiceover that we have, and we can use the generate or add voiceover buttons to add a voiceover. An in-depth tutorial on syncing, adding voiceovers, and generating voiceovers can be found in our Tutorials tab. Now, if we select our Doodle, we can see another category that appears alongside the Slide category, which will show us further editing options for the element that we currently have selected. These options may differ depending on the type of element that you've selected. Here we can modify the line weight, the line color of the element, also alter animation types. We have an in-depth tutorial on how to do this in our Tutorials tab. We can also alter the animation speed of an element by using the slider or inputting the number of seconds we want the element to be drawn in. The End Delay option will add a delay after the animation is finished, before switching over to the next doodle or slide. Note that these two options will be uneditable if we have the Sync with Voice option active. Selecting a text element will show us similar options. Let's go through the text specific ones. We can modify the text in the text input box, but we can also edit text formatting or alignment. With the draw animation selected, we also have the option to draw text from right to left. We can modify the font size, the font itself, space between letters, line height, color, and we can even decide if we want the letters to be filled or not and edit how much we want to fill them. And now let's move to the project tab, where we find firstly the soundtrack category, where we can add a soundtrack from our device or select one from our library. More details regarding this can be found in the in-depth tutorial found in our tutorials tab. We can also see the hand category, where we can select whatever hand we want to use for our project, or no hand at all. Lastly, let's have a look at the options we have on the top right. We can manually save our project by using the save button, but please note that the project is saved regularly and automatically after alterations have been made. Hitting the export will take us to the export pop-up where we can render our finished project in four different resolutions. After the render is complete, we can also play or download the video to our device. Selecting the profile will cause a drop-down menu to appear and will show us the account details, remaining AI credits, button to add AI credits, the settings page where we can modify the password, add a profile picture, the billing section which shows us the current plan we have and invoices, support where you can get in touch with us or explore our handy knowledge base, and lastly, logging out of your account.
And that's a wrap. Congratulations on completing this tutorial. Now remember, if you experience any difficulties, me, as well as my colleagues from the support team, are always there, one ticket away. So make sure that you reach out to us with any kind of issues. Thank you very much for listening.